come in, get comfortable, grab a drink. But first of all, let us know where you're visiting us from. We'd like to hear from you and to make this an interactive experience. We have also would like for you to ask your questions as well in the chat below. Now, today's topic is going to be something that is near and dear to me, and that is retail. Now, whether you have an online business or a physical store, the topic that we're going to be discussing today is how to make your retail business much more efficient and get and overcome the stumbling blocks that sometimes we encounter. Today, we are joined by a panel of excellent professionals, starting with Kevin Clore. He is the CIO of Tent and Table. I'm also joined by my colleague, Lee Jones, who is a senior account manager, and of course, the CEO for BrainVire, Chinton Shaw. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me on this panel. My name is Yosiat Jim Bernard, and I am the head of product communications and will be the host of today's presentation. Now, first of all, let's talk about Odoo. Odoo is an online uh, suite of applications living in a platform to make your life that much easier. Not only have we done close to 8 million implementations around the world, but we have close to 30 million different applications as well. Odoo is a seamless, integrated, and highly flexible tool, and it was created to help businesses grow and have a truly end-to-end -end solution. Now, if you would like to learn more about Odoo as a tool for your business, in the description below, there are some links that you can learn more with either some webinars or also a product demo. But here we are also joined by our gold partner, BrainVire. Lee, can you tell us a little bit about BrainVire? Absolutely, Yossi. Thank you so much. And welcome, everyone, uh, to this edition of our um, online webinars and roadshows. BrainVire is um, definitely one of our most global and international partners uh, with headquarters in the Americas. They've been around now for um, going to 20 years and have been enabling companies digitally uh, with, with technical, technological solutions such as Odoo um, for, you know, for a very long time. They currently, um, like I said, have headquarters in the United States, but are doing business pretty much in uh, every major continent, Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and um, have uh, already implemented thousands of clients. In the last two years, as gold partners uh, within our ecosystem, they have also had the opportunity to enable clients such as uh, Tent and Table. Uh, and we have the pleasure of having Kevin with us today to tell us more about that experience. Um, but um, they're just an all-rounder um, when it comes to e-commerce, retail, manufacturing, um, any pretty much any application that Odoo covers, uh, BrainVire has uh, a team of, of very, very applied professionals uh, in that field. Uh, Thank we're you very so much, Lee. to have them as part Actually, of our network as well. Let's get Tintin in on this as well. Tintin, can you tell us a little bit more as the CEO of BrainWire? Tell us sure. about your company and also where in the world you're located. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for having me and thank you for this, joining the webinar. BrainWire, as a company, we focus on uh, digital transformation, helping companies to go digital, enable them with the right set of digital platform which include the AI, ML, blockchain, software 4.0 from an implementation point of view. Uh, we are in uh, 19 years in the business, 20 global offices, 1,500 plus resources. Uh, we have acquired a few companies, so we have grown organic and inorganic. That's how the company growth has been. Uh, a very much focus on retail, and Udu has been one of the front runner from our technology offering point of view in retail world. Now, just like, you know, today I'm taking this webinar from the airport. I thought like, you know, a lot of people will join and they will be missing the airport field during the COVID time. So I'm just taking to the airport. So if you hear some announcement, please excuse me. Um, offices wise in the US, we are headquartered out of Dallas and uh, we operate from uh, New York, uh, California, uh, San Francisco, San Jose area, 
in Utah, Salt Lake City. We are in Canada. We are in Middle East, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. We are in Singapore from Southeast Asia. Europe, we are in Greece. And India, we are in Mumbai and Ahmedabad. So this is our global presence. Uh, every country has a headquarter with a local CEO combining with the offshore team. So that's a brief about us as a company. So you are a man on the go with offices all around the world. I can see, <laughs> I can see how important it is. Now, just a highlight, um, the map here, the, the office is in purple, um, where you are an OD partner, but the scope and breadth of BrainWire truly is impressive. Next today, because we have a very specific case study we would like to showcase, and that is about tent and table and how uh, BrainWire was able to help them with their digital transformation. With us here, we have Kevin Clora, the CIO. And Kevin, can you please just tell us a little bit about Tent and Table, what you actually do, and then we'll go on with some quick questions about what your digital transformation looked like. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I've worked with all of you in some capacity in our journey uh, to this omni-channel environment and growth for our company. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody else who's uh, attending, and you know, please feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, Tent and Table was started off as a very small family-owned business. Uh, they found a need in the marketplace to provide um, party and event rental customers with equipment that they then would rent and earn revenue from. So, you know, products that you would see at a wedding or a party like tents, tables, chairs, inflatables, they began to import all of that equipment from overseas and sell it. Uh, it started off as a very small pro stores company, almost managed from spreadsheets. Um, mm. We've gone through the journey of uh, Magento 1, Magento 2, all sorts of ERPs. Uh, we were spread out around, amongst uh, multiple e-commerce environments. Uh, the, the head of the company is very entrepreneurial. He really focused on growth. And um, we, uh, you know, we've been growing every year, year over year. And pretty soon it just got to the point where we were really looking for a true omni-channel solution to help with our inventory, help with our accounting, help with our sales management, and help with our purchasing. So that's a little bit about us. Um, and then any questions specifically you have about our challenges and our growth? Absolutely. Those. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's perfect segue. Tell me a little bit about the challenges that you had and what made you choose BrainVire? Like, how did, how did that even happen? Yeah, so uh, again, we were a growing company, but uh, there really wasn't a lot of um, concentration or, or omni-channel uh, implementation within the company. We were, you know, we had, we were kind of all over the place and we were having inventory challenges. We were having warehousing challenges, accounting challenges, just the normal challenges uh, that I assume most of the people watching this webinar today are having. So when I uh, moved or when I came with the company um, in 2015, one of my goals was to kind of centralize operations and look for a really strong uh, development partner uh, because we were vested in Magento. So um, going to the, the conferences and the trade shows, I met Chinton, I met BrainBuyer. I really liked them. I really liked that they were local, that they were here in the U.S., that they had a presence around the world. And uh, so I actually uh, gave them a little bit of work at first. It was to do digital marketing on one of our branded sites. Uh, not, not much there to do, but I just wanted to kind of test them and see, mm -hmm. see how they did. And they did excellent. They did an extraordinary job. So from that, um, they, we eventually grew to them handling all four of our Magento sites, um, all of our development integration needs, including ERP, uh, accounting, CRM, e-commerce, uh, and now today, uh, they are a vital partner, um, a vital partner in the growth and operation of our company. And that's, that's exactly, you know, the synergy between partners and, and, and our customers. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the solution that uh, BrainWire offered in, in, in overcoming the challenges that you were having? Right. So the first thing they did is when they took a look at our business, they saw how spread out we were amongst multiple e-commerce platforms, um, QuickBooks, uh, uh, Big Commerce, Magento One, and then there was still a lot of like work, manual work being done from spreadsheets and telephone calls. 
And they said, uh, you know, Kevin, you really got to centralize this. You got to get this into one location. Since we were Magento One at the time, that was uh, the, the, the fastest and easiest way to get us at least into some form of an omni-channel experience or environment. So we consolidated everything into Magento One. Uh, they found us a good partner uh, for an embedded ERP so we could start doing purchasing and inventory management. Uh, then they bridged us out uh, so we could connect our QuickBooks. Um, and they also were able, which this was really excellent, uh, through Magento, they uh, created extensions for us and connected all our third-party marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, and Walmart. So they they were really good about getting us connected um, all under one uh, roof, so to speak. But then I think the limitations of Magento One really began to show itself. Uh, mm. I've learned I've learned throughout the six years that I've been here doing this that Magento really wants to be a shopping cart, uh, and the more you take it away from its primary task of being a shopping cart, the worse it's going to run not only for the people within the admin environment, but your customers on the front end. So things were breaking down. Um, things were not working up to what I thought was a level that we needed to have the significant growth that I was looking for. And that's mm -hmm. when we really dug in with BrainBuyer to say, look, at, we need to reimagine our entire e-commerce ecosystem. I want uh, you know, out-of-the-box ideas. I want to know about different systems in different ways because I feel now the technology is actually inhibiting our growth. And so mm -hmm. we dug in with them. We tried some. We tried an end-to-end -end system that really didn't work out for us. It wasn't open source and didn't give us nearly the flexibility we needed to account for all the ways that we sell products, the way we order products, the way we just do business in the marketplaces. Mm -hmm. So what we decided on was, uh, I think, really one of the first of its kind is a Mito 2 upgrade for e-commerce. Um, in Oro CRM, which is a completely open source CRM system for our sales team, and Odoo ERP, which is the open source ERP that can connect to all of it. And they convinced me that this was the best way to go. And, and after uh, looking at it and demoing it, I felt it was really going to be a smart investment for our company to make. And so we, uh, we we went about the implementation, we agreed to it, and here we are now, I think, more than two full years after that full-on implementation, and the results speak for itself. The growth has been tremendous, um, and more importantly is we have a, a, like a legacy, uh, a lot of legacy employees, people who have been here for a very long time, who have been through multiple systems. Mm -hmm. The level of adoption of the Odoo ERP system to me is the most impressive thing. Everyone uses it. Everyone enjoys using it. It's very user friendly. And in fact, there are some people using it in this company that I said would never log into it. And they log into it and they use it every day and they use it on their phones with the smart app. So it's been a revolutionary transformative decision for our company and has really taken us to heights that we never even could have projected. That's wonderful. I mean, not only has Odoo underpinned the entire uh, system that you have in terms of operations from start to end, but it also really does create that ecosystem that you're looking for internally to increase efficiency, as well as the adoption of the system has been pretty seamless. Now, the, the success that you have received and achieved through Odoo and, and with BrainBuyer can you tell us a little bit more of some of the successes and the increase in sales that you have achieved because of COVID-19 and because you had these systems in place? I feel like things have become a lot more smooth in that, in that tumultuous time. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we saw the growth right away, even prior to the pandemic. We saw the growth because we just had visibility and transparency that we never had before. We were, we were really able to make better purchasing decisions, better selling decisions. Um, we had accounting views that were never really available to us before. Um, so we, we saw the growth uh, and we were growing what, what I would say is, is a really great ex, you know, rate and, and we were excited about the growth. Then the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, there was really uh, put us into a sense of panic because, as I said, mm -hmm. who are our primary customers? Businesses who put on events, 
The mm -hmm. one thing other than hospitality hit hardest during the pandemic were there were no events. Nobody was That's putting right. on events. Weddings were canceled. Graduations were canceled. Birthday parties were canceled. They certainly weren't allowing companies to come on site and install tents and tables. So we really felt like this was going to be devastating to our business. Uh, we, um, you know, we got with BrainVire and I let them know my concerns and talked specifically to Chinton. And he said, well, let's roll up our sleeves and let's figure out what we can do because we think, you know, you guys have a great product. You have a great business. Let's figure it, figure this out. So we really were able to, with Odoo, I think, dive into the numbers and mm. um, really look at where our customers were, where our customers were buying from, which products were profitable, which products were even moving prior to and during the beginning part of the pandemic. And we came up with uh, merchandising strategies, marketing strategies. Um, we came up with things that we could implement on the website as well as we could implement within the uh, purchasing part of Odoo. And we completely pivoted our focus um, from how we had been selling to a brand new way of selling mm -hmm. in terms of the customers we were reaching out to and the way we were selling to these customers. And it was, you know, it was hugely successful. I mean, BrainVire really helped us to redefine our business. And one of the problems uh, that we've always had is I just never felt we were diverse enough. You know, I felt like too much of our customers were in that rental and party event business. And it always worried me. And one of the things the pandemic did with BrainVire's help was helped us look beyond that or imagine beyond that. So uh, we were able to do that. And right now it's the most diverse client base we've ever had. It's hospitals, it's schools, it's government agencies, it's restaurants, it's more consumers uh, that we ever had before because we were able to pinpoint the products that they wanted. So um, it really allowed us to pivot and make really good, smart decisions, even as the, prog as the pandemic was progressing and there was so much mm. uncertainty we had great visibility in what was moving and what wasn't moving, what to prioritize and what not to prioritize. So um, it really saved our business. I mean, we felt we were in big trouble. And now I have to say from a number standpoint, um, when I came on in 2015, we were about an eight to $9 million a year business. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in 2019, prior to the pandemic hitting, we were up around uh, 15 to 16 million, which is in itself is great growth, tremendous growth. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to say that uh, end of fiscal year, which is for us was uh, March 31st of 2021, we're around $32 million and we're projecting to be close to 50 uh, in the next fiscal year. So um, wow. the tools work, the system works, the omni channel environment is just so impressive. And uh, it's easy for to get people to adopt it. And mm -hmm. we would not be anywhere near the growth we're at without the, uh, the help of BrainVire and the help of Odoo. You know, Kevin, that's such a wonderful and inspirational story. You've touched on a couple of things that we are going to be uh, digging in deeper on this presentation. And really to mirror the success that Ten Table has had, and to use that as a launching pad to inspire those who are watching and others in the retail space, whether e-commerce or a brick and mortar store, to really think about digitizing your company and having a digital transformation like Chinton was talking about. And, and to that end, let's, let's go ahead and talk about the main pillars of today's webinar, really the meat and potatoes of what we want to discuss today. First of all, let's let's take a take a look at the challenges that face many many organizations and businesses uh, with multiple applications and disparate systems. But then also the five main pillars of what a digital transformation strategy is going to look like. We're going to take a look at the omni-channel experience and why that is important. We're also going to look at uh, loyalty solutions and what a loyalty program and how a loyalty program could enhance uh, customer retention. Then we're going to take a look at the POS solutions, um, as well as inventory management and rounding out the topic with accounting. We all love numbers, right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, 
many, many companies do business with the same, as the same way. In other words, they're used to siloed solutions. They use disparate systems for their CRM, their accounting, their inventory management. And what happens is a level of inefficiency due to the API connectors that are used to connect applications with one another and to move data from one place to the next. Now, this poses a couple of main problems. Number one, these API connectors have to be maintained and it doesn't come cheap. When one application is uh, upgraded, well, then that API needs to be upgraded as well. And so that is costly. Also, having uh, siloed solutions makes reporting not very efficient. I may not know what is in my warehouse at any point in time, or I may not know how much have my top salesperson has invoiced in any given, any given month. So really having an end-to-end -end solution is significantly much more efficient than having siloed solutions. Also having disparate systems, you're gonna to have to train your employees on various different applications just to get the job done. This adds a level of complexity, expense, and truly, even though we're used to working with siloed solutions, it's really not the most efficient way for scaling and to have an end-to-end -end streamlined all-in-one solution. Now, Odoo offers everything on one platform. It is a modular-based uh, platform made up of various different applications that work seamlessly with one another. So you no longer have to invest in API connectors to move data from one place to another. It is all seamlessly built right out of the box. You have now one source of truth between your customer and your business. And that's it. Easy. It's a group of integrated applications and that support every part of your business from inventory management, manufacturing, e-commerce, human resources, marketing, the list goes on. Now that we know a little bit about how these applications work in concert, let's take a look at the various pillars for your digital transformation. But first, Chinton, can you tell us what are the main takeaways that we should have from software? Definitely. I mean, when you look at any ERP for a retail implementation point of view, you want to make sure that you have a very good store solution which is available for your point of sale people, or if you have a people on the sales on the phone, you want to have a very good CRM solution so that they can have a better tool to do a better sales. A decent amount of control on your inventory end to end on all the channels from a multi-channel point of view. For example, in case of Kevin, I mean, he's selling on four different websites of, your, of their own. He's selling on four different marketplaces. So four into four, it's 16 different touch point plus they do a sales on the phone. Apart from that, they also go to a lot of trade shows, which is not happening during the COVID time. But if they are going in non-COVID time, they are also doing an order booking over there to make sure that your stock inventory available on all this channel all the time with the pricing information is very important. And as the owner or the CEO of the company, you want a good data. And that's what the Kevin was mentioning, that once they're able to look at the inventory, they're able to look at the profitability, they're able to look at the product, you're able to make the right decision. The problem with like, you know, the ERP software is that you don't have a single software from a retail omnichannel point of view. And if you are using multiple applications, your data residing on multiple systems. And then you depend on the human to collect those data into a single Excel sheet spreadsheet and give you a view, which is never going to be a real time. And that's where the CEO struggle to make the decisions or mm -hmm. the management. And this is the most important. And the most important is the CFO, right? I mean, your numbers, whether your stocks in the warehouse are costing you more money, shipping is get, getting more money in case of Kevin. I mean, they were also looking at like, you know, shipping was costing them a little bit higher. So they were looking at how to optimize. And because of this Udu and the omnichannel experience, they exactly able to see that shipping was a problem and they wanted to optimize that. So once you have the data, you can optimize. So I think these are the main pillar from any software point of view that you need to look from a retail. And I think Udu with a true omni-channel experience, having sales, purchase, inventory, accounting, CRM, uh, and to some level of manufacturing, integrated all solution makes perfect sense 
from a software point of view. So for our retail customers, typically we suggest them with Udo, and we feel from a true digitalization perspective, Udo is a great solution. And just to tell you a little bit more on this, uh, Kevin was using, I mean, Tent and Table was using a couple of different platforms. They tried Salesforce a little bit. They looked at Boost My Shop. They were looked at a couple of other ERPs like NetSuite and all. And they tried few things on a POC level, but none of them were giving a true experience which they needed from an omni-channel point of view. And that's where the Udo was a perfect solution. And we are very proud to be associated with Udo. And we feel it's a great solution from a retail point of view, especially during this COVID time. It's a great solution. Well, I mean, thank you so much. And it's just such a wonderful uh, it's, it's a wonderful occasion to hear these success stories, right? And let's break down these components a little bit more, starting with omni-channel, the omni-channel experience and, and what that actually means. Kevin spoke about it, you, uh, Chinton, you spoke about it, uh, but can you break it down for those who may not know what an omni-channel experience is? Sure. So, I mean, Omni Channel is all about like, you know, that multiple touch points with your customers and you want to make sure that any channel your customer is coming, a new customer or a repeat customer, you want to give them a same experience. To give them a same experience, you need to be aware that this customer came from which channel, what was the history of the customer, so that at least you can do it. So, there are going to be different type of aspect which comes into Omni Channel from an experience point of view. So, sales, so you want to make sure that your sales team give the same experience to the customer. Service team marketing team if they are coming through the different marketing channels commerce which is your e-commerce engagement like you know they are doing different engagement on different marketing channels a platform and ecosystem whatever like you know that you are marketing analytics and dashboard like you know that you are using those analytics to do the customer target email marketing in that also you want to make sure that those omni experience comes a community that if you have a blog and marketing with all those community you want to make sure that all of those things are ultimately coming through the omni-channel experience. So these are like, you know, the pillar of uh, how the retail company engage with the customer in a different way. And you want mm -hmm. to make sure that you recognize the customer in all the channels in the same way, and you're able to give them a solution or offerings or experience, which can be seamless. And that's where I think the Udo with open source and the open architecture play a vital role like in integrating with Google Analytics, or you are thinking about integrating with maybe a Magento from a commerce point of view, or a omni-channel integration from a marketplaces. All of those come seamlessly with Udo on a real-time basis, which is the most important. Many ERP claim that they can do it, but none of them are real-time. So, I mean, that's a perfect example, like, you know, we are talking about. So, warehouses, like, you know, that you want to make sure that the people who are doing the shipping, they are or packing, they should be aware, this customer is my gold customer, premium customer, I want to make sure that do it in a different way. So you need to have that hands-on information, it's a repeat order or a new order. A website, you want to make sure that the experiences remain the same on a mobile, which is the most important thing. POS or a mobile POS, again, you want to make sure the similar experience goes through. CRM, the most important from a phone support and a chat support, all your marketing channels and a marketplace. So these are the main pillar. And if you can give the same experience to the customer on all this channel, then you are the winner from a digital point of view. And I think that's where the Udo is helping to give the seamless experience. I, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Kevin, can you tell us a little bit more about what this omnichannel experience was for Tent and Table? Did you have an omnichannel strategy before? Um, can you just walk us a little bit through on how you are having this complete, you know, customer centric omni channel transformation for, for your business? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think everybody says kind of omni channel is the goal, right? Omni channel is one of those words that we throw around, but I think when you have to sit down and think about it, you don't really know what that means in terms of how you want your business to operate. You just say, hey, we need to be omni channel. Well, wh what does that really mean? Um, I, you know, Chinton just went through a very excellent theoretical analysis of what omnichannel is, and that's that's what it is. Uh, from a practical standpoint, from the people who are actually you know trying to use the system uh, every day, what omnichannel means to us is I have one place I can go to find the information I need. That's it. That's omnichannel, and I and I can I can best explain it I think with two examples, if if you'll indulge me. So. Um, one one happened just today, and 
one happens almost every day. So we'll have an order uh, that didn't ship. And the owner will call me up, uh, who is excellent. Our owners are so entrepreneurial and, you know, they, they're very busy and they just want answers to questions and they invested in this technology. And you want to really be able to give them the answers to those questions and, and make their investment worthwhile. So they'll call me and say, Kevin, why didn't this order ship? So previously, I'd probably have to go into, let me count maybe up to five different platforms to get the answer to that question. And here's why. It was an Amazon order. Okay. You want to know why this Amazon Prime order did not ship today? I'm sure people out there have the same experience. These have to go or you get penalized. So previously, I'd have to go into Magento to see when the order was placed, to see if it even existed, to see if there was shipping information there. Then I would have to go into Amazon to see if the shipping information uploaded to Amazon, if shipping information wasn't there. If it wasn't there, I'd also have to go into Amazon to see when it was placed. Then I'd have to go into ShipStation to see if it had been shipped through ShipStation, and if it had, why it hadn't gone to Magento and up to Amazon, and on and on. And that's, you know, you're talking about uh, a time investment of a good 15 to 20 minutes just on one order and why it didn't ship. Mm. If they were to ask me that question today, uh, I can go right into Odoo. I can segment all my orders by Amazon orders. I can look it up by the order number. I can pull it and see if it has shipped or if it hasn't shipped. And if it hasn't shipped, I can click into the order and I can see why it hasn't shipped. It probably hasn't shipped because the product they ordered for whatever reason isn't in stock now when the order came through. I can click on that product. I can see if we have any coming in the soonest they're going to come in. Are they going to come in in time to meet my time deadlines? If not, I can quickly create a PO to the vendor to order it for future orders. And then I can mm. look in Odoo within how we have it set up to see what our comparable replacement orders, offer that to the customer, edit the order, and send them the product they need, and then see the tracking in Magento, and then click on a button to see if it's uploaded to Amazon. So what used to be a 15 to 20 minute task, I can do in about two to three minutes. Wow. wow. Another, exa another example of Omnichannel, and I think this comes up almost every day for people hopefully who are listening, um, especially kind of more on the money side of things. Uh, ownership wanted to know um, the product information and history for stakes. We sell stakes. Uh, steel is out of hand now, just out of hand, not mm -hmm. only in price, but in supply chain. So we're looking to source it domestically. So we want a full rundown on stakes, what we have currently with pricing compared to cost, and also uh, sales history on the stakes and what they're selling for on each marketplace. Again, previously, I'd have to go into Amazon. I'd have to go into eBay. I'd have to go into each Magento store. I'd have to go into Walmart. I'd have to go into QuickBooks. I'd have to get all that information. It was just, it was a nightmare. Mm. Uh, today, I was able to go into Odoo. I was able to sort by stakes. We have an attribute called stakes. Pull up all my stake products. Um, in that view, I was able to see the price the cost, the landed cost, the available products, and the forecasted products. I simply uh, saved that search, um, sent it to him, because you can save a search for every user, and said, here, drop down to stakes, you'll see that. And then I went into my sales report, and I did the same thing. And what I did was I filtered it for all of our marketplaces, and I saved that search and said, go to sales, and just click on here. He did. And he could see every place a stake had sold in every marketplace, how many sold, the amount it sold for, the landed cost of the order, and the margin of the order, all in one view. That in total today took me about eight minutes. Wow. Uh, I couldn't even tell you how long it would have taken me previously, especially to get all of those eBay, Amazon, Walmart information in to the analysis as well. So I, I don't even know how long it would have taken me. It, it would have probably have been something that I would have just tried to pass off onto somebody else because of the time commitment. Not that I would pass it, want to pass it off, but I'm just so busy. I don't have an hour, hour and a half to invest in right. a project like that. But it was real easy for me to do. And then having the mobile app, I did it all from my phone. I mean, just like I now, mean, as, we, as Chinton was talking, I quick pulled up the app. I checked our sales for the day. I checked our must shipped orders, see if they shipped. And I sent messages in the chatter of Odoo to our shipping manager on the three orders I just found that hadn't shipped that need to ship and asked him what's up. I did that while Chitin was talking under my table on the app. 
I mean, when talking about a 21st century revolution and a, a digital revolution for your company, these are precisely the examples that let us know that the future is now. Whether the airport looking at um, inventory uh, levels or, or seeing sales, you know, it's, it's one of these transformative experiences that are taking companies to the next level. And so not only did we listen to a theoretical understanding of what omnichannel is, but we also had a practical idea of how it has improved efficiency in your company and the importance of having that level of integration and connectivity across all of your parts of your business. Now that we understand a little bit more about what an omnichannel experience is like, let's talk and go on to our following uh, topic, which is going to be loyalty solutions. We all know that customers are probably very fickle entities. However, they are indispensable in the growth of our businesses. I'd like to ask Chinton exactly why a loyalty program is important for a modern day business. I mean, loyalty is definitely one of the key aspects for retaining the customer, which we all know, right? I mean, whether we go to Macy's or whether we go to Walmart or whether we go to Kroger's, we are going to get the loyalty or CVS or Walgreens. They are all going to talk about the loyalty. Now, when we talk about retail loyalty with the online and offline store, you want to make sure that loyalty is available for online, offline store, in stores and on the go if you are on a traveling case and that is the most important aspect so crafting the royalty program such that the, it makes customers smile or it makes customer happy but in order to do that you need to have a data of that customer from all different omni channels understand your customers their buying behaviors what channel they are coming how they are buying what they like what is their preference and based on that you start suggesting or based on that you at least give them a loyalty point so for example if like, I like to buy for my daughter or for my wife something, I will be most happy that if I get the same loyalty coupon or something where I can buy something for them. So which mm -hmm. makes perfect sense from a understand your customer and give them what they want. I mean, if you can blast them with their standard coupons, but that is not going to be any good, right? I mean, nowadays everyone gets coupon from all the thing. Mm -hmm. But the, if you know your customers and then if you know the segmentation of the customer, and then you can offer them the loyalty in the best way. That is the best possible thing. And then optimize them from all the omni-channel experience point of view. That what omni-channel they came. So if they came from eBay, I need to make sure that next time when they're coming, I need to give them some discount on my own website so I can bring them customer into our own platform. So I think that is what like, you know, the loyalty is all about. And you need to look at the customer from whole holistic point of view and actually give them the loyalty which they want. I've seen many companies spend a lot of money on loyalty, but the return on investment is very less. In order to increase the return on investment, you need to make sure that you need to know your customers. You need to understand what the channel they came from, and you need to target them in the right way to give them the loyalty as they want, not what you want to give them. I think that's a very uh, important concept to really understand in terms of loyalty. Uh, I, I think it's very underestimated how important it really is. But uh, Lee, can you tell us a little bit more just on the O2, what Odoo offers in terms of loyalty program? I think, um, I, honestly, you know, we could talk for hours about uh, how different customers leverage different parts of our solutions. But uh, I'm going to mention two things. I'm going to mention integration and information. Uh, we've talked extensively about how integrating data from different platforms, from different channels to keep it on topic um, is crucial for not just the day to day, but ultimately on the impact it has uh, to our customers um, to make sure that they remain satisfied with the service, with the products that we are offering them uh, or that our clients and users are offering and delivering to them. Um, making sure that their orders arrive on time, making sure that all these little things and the whole life cycle of the customer journey um, are met um, with exceptional with exceptional results. Um, this is step one, I think, um, because um, the customer first has to be satisfied and and it, it has to receive a service that they're expecting. Um, you know, um, before they actually become loyal customers. 
uh, or recurring customers, which is what we want. And then all that information that we gather from this customer journey again is what we take away in terms of how these, um, you know, how these customers, they could be, you know, individuals or they could be other businesses that we uh, collaborate and do business with, how they like to do business with us. How do they interact with us? What type of platforms do they mostly use to communicate and express their wants, the, their needs, their pain? Um, you know, sometimes as service providers, our solutions, our services, our products fail. How are we going to be there for our clients? You know, what type of service are we going to be delivering to them when things don't go out as planned? And, you know, picking up from, from those little issues sometimes is crucial for retaining customers over, you know, over years. And, um, and then, of course, you know, depending on the type of business that you do, once you gather all this information that comes potentially from different sources and you integrate it in a friendly uh, platform like Odoo, um, Kevin, I loved how you mentioned that your actual your, your your team members actually enjoy using the application, you know, the smart app and and the platform. Uh, that's what we strive for. Um, once we have and we're able to do that, then we can come back with different, you know, offers points, um, different types of suggestions in terms of products that we assume that they might love based on their trends and uh, continue to expand the business um, that we do together with our clients. Um, that's, again, in a nutshell, because I've already had conversations about loyalty programs for hours, uh, and, and uh, we don't want to you know, just um, stay on this topic. We want to move on. Um, but ultimately, it's the experience, you know, it's the experience that the clients take away associated to our clients, uh, our mutual clients, brands, those who use Odoo for their business. Absolutely. And it's just such an important uh, point to, to really emphasize. Now, now that we know a little bit more about what a loyalty program looks like and how it helps uh, retention with our customers, Let's focus now on really the crux of it all when it comes to either an e-commerce uh, retail situation or a brick and mortar store. And it's really having that powerful POS solution. Uh, Chinton, can you tell us a little bit more about what are some of the must haves, some of the critical things we need to have when considering a POS? Definitely. Or point of sale. Definitely. So I think it was a great point that Lee mentioned, information and integration. And POS is all about that. You need to make sure that the customer journey has to be captured and people should be aware. So if I'm a customer who has bought online and if I'm coming to the store, the POS person should know that I'm already a customer with online purchase and now I'm coming to the store. So they want to make sure that there is a different experience for me. Mobile is must have that you want to walk around the store and you want to do a checkout. POS has to be personal as exactly I was mentioning that every customer needs to have segmented so that you can give them a personalized uh, offerings, upselling and cross-selling. Offers do matter, like loyalty and the offers, but offers which is tailor-made for me, not tailor-made from a company point of view, but the company wants to tailor-made for me as a customer. Mm -hmm. And your POS should suit your people because if you're in a grocery store or something high volume, you want to make sure that POS should be easy to walk, run it should not be a bottleneck with all this information, which extra information which will be available apart from your standard checkout. And then make sure that you have all different type of payment solutions. Every quarter, a new payment solution is coming in the market or every two quarters. You want to make sure that your POS can support Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay, things like that. And maybe who knows in the next six months, it might say that, okay, let's do a crypto payment as well. So we mm -hmm. have to make sure that this is done. And that's where I think it's very important to have a system which can be scalable and flexible to add a new payment solution on the go as and when required. So this is some of the must have from a POS selection point of view when we make choice for the POS. And what is the Odoo POS system look like? Can you uh, yeah. expand on that a little bit and, sure. and what makes it different? Definitely. I mean, so I will tell you that we implemented Udu POS probably around 17 odd customers. Some of them are like, you know, a one store solution. Some of them are like a mobile POS type of client, which is on a trade show. And some of them are, which are like 50 to 100 stores. 
so like you know that and we completely after looking at many pos we have nailed down to the udu pos and we thought this is the best pos in fact for some of our sap customers which are using sap in the back end erp we use sap s4 hana we make sure that udu is the pos used because sap does not have a good pos and if you're looking at some other pos udu is the best pos to work around on that so mobile pos accessibility from a udu point of view is amazing integrating with the e-commerce whether it's a udu commerce or magento bringing those data real time amazingly there very good stock management between within the stores of udu their own store whether which store you are working or uh, different stores or maybe a uh, dark house like you know dark That's warehouse type of thing yeah multi language support uh, uh, Rob, compatible with all different type of hardware I'm just sorry, a little bit about the background noise, but uh, most important is also about your, uh, like you know that you don't need to change your hardware. So when we do this uh, POS implementation, the first question comes, saying that hey, I'm already having my old POS, I'm replacing with Udo. Do I need to change my hardware? Do I need to change this? And then we say no. I mean, you don't need to change your hardware. Udo support most of the hardware. It works on your browser. So as long as you have a standard computer with a browser, it works fine. So like you know. I can count, go on and on and on, but it's amazing. These are the most important features which are available, and a very good integration with all the standard hardware is makes Udo POS very unique. And integrating this POS with the e-commerce and the entire well, ERP solution airport, is the most important. So that's what I can say. Thank you so much, um, Kevin. Can you tell us a little bit more about? Uh, if you know if you had a, a a brick and mortar store or how you use Odoo POS in your in your particular case yeah we don't we don't have a brick and mortar store but what we do is we uh when it's not a global pandemic um we go to trade shows throughout the year uh there are two really large trade shows in our industry called IAPA and ARA um they're usually in very large convention centers that have really horrible internet so mm. um one of our challenges has always been, how do we sell at these shows? And, um, you know, the, the, the best way that, that the company could come up with uh, the, prior to the POS system was um, we would print off sales order forms and bring thousands and thousands of those to the show. Uh, the customers would come to the booth. They would hand fill out an order form. Um, with the sales rep, uh, we would take those order forms and we would scan them in uh, using a portable scanner at the trade show. Uh, we would then move them uh, to a Google Doc folder mm -hmm. and somebody back in, in New York then was receiving these. They would enter the order in manually as a quote. Uh, they would push that order from a quote to Magento. Then at night when the sales reps got back, they would re or no, I'm sorry, they would keep it as a quote. When the sales reps got back at night, they would review all their quotes. If it looked good, they would then move them to the e-commerce system and apply the payment and everything like that. So just a horrible system, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing, none of the words I just said were good. I mean, there was nothing good about that at all, but it was a necessary right. evil because we couldn't even, if we wanted to, do the orders in the e-commerce platform because the internet is so bad at many of these conferences and you know you're required to be online if you want to process an order through e-commerce mm -hmm. so chitin came to me and he said look at i have a solution for you it's the odoo pos i'm telling you you're going to love it i've implemented it for many many customers and the best thing about it is it works offline and i you know i didn't believe it i said well you got to show me that so he implemented the pos and basically, you do need to be online to load it, and then it loads all the data, but then it works completely offline, um, and it works really well. So now we can arm our sales reps at trade shows with just a, a, an iPad or a Samsung Galaxy, some sort of tablet. They sit down mm -hmm. with their customers. They do the order right on the POS. Um, it's really organized. It like keeps all the orders under the sales rep who's logged in, so it's good for us to see. And then, you know, throughout the day, they might go over to a hotspot or the Internet might work better sometimes than others. And as soon as they're able to get online and get a good signal, all those orders go right up to the ERP system in real time. They go into the inventory management part and the sales management part. There's not, no other work that needs to be done. They just all the automations take their course after that. So 
a huge time saver, huge accuracy saver. I can't tell you how many issues we've had with customers writing in their own orders, not being able to read what they wrote, not being able, you know, not writing their emails down correctly or their phone numbers, just little things like that, that you don't even think about. Uh, the POS really, you know, helped us with that. And then of course, method of payment, it really increased the method of payments we could take at the show as well um, by having a POS system. So that's how we use it and we really like it. And it's really the only POS system we've ever tried that checks all the boxes for us. I mean, again, it's just another example of a win um, by having this integrated solution. And, and it's just, again, point after point after point, it's just clicking all the boxes, like you said, Kevin. You know, the other end of that POS is inventory management, right? So not only is it important to have a robust POS management system, but it's also important to really understand what's going on with your inventory and having those two systems work in concert. Jensen, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the importance of sure. a, of an integrated inventory management system? Definitely. And I think as Kevin was mentioning, so I will just take that point that tablet at a trade show to book the order, but at the same time, having a real-time inventory so that salesperson exactly know what to commit, when to commit, and when the delivery call will come, which is the most important right. aspect. So I think inventory management is all about with this all omni-channel experience of multiple channels you are doing your sales in the retail. Like in case of Kevin, he has four different websites, plus he has a online four different marketplaces stores. So you talk about 16 touch point, plus the salespeople on the phone are booking the orders. When you look at all this touch point, you need to make sure that your inventory is available at a real-time basis in all the channels. Second thing, 3PL. Like, you know, most of the time you use 3PL for some of the fulfillment, but those inventory belongs to you. So you want to make sure that those inventory is also available so that we can do the 3PL. And then you do contract manufacturing because sometimes you know that some item you don't want to manufacture, you can do a contract manufacturing or you can do the contract uh, uh, outsourcing. But at the same time, you need to be aware that which item, what is my quantity in hand, and what I need to order, what I need to do this. And I think in case of Kevin, like, you know, 2019, when the COVID hit, it was a big change, like, you know, in 2020, that completely that, like, you know, which inventory is in hand, what can be easily available, which is best profit making, and then looking at those data and making sure that you work towards it. So I think inventory management is all about, like, you know, that you, like, you know, that having a good inventory system is important so that your data is correct. And then data is published at all the channels is the most important thing. So I think that's what I will say all about inventory management. Thank you so much, Vincent. Um, Kevin, do you want to add anything in terms of how Odi was able to yeah. improve this, the, the, the uh, connection just, between you? Yeah, oh. one sec. I need to sign off. I mean, just to catch the flight. I'm sorry about that. But Maharshi will take care and I will be available on the email to answer the question. Really apologize for this. Session is going great, so much, and I'm so much excited. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Kevin, can you just walk us a little bit through the that the, the, the connection between your POS and your inventory management? I know that it was impactful when you were in conferences or trade shows. Um, how has that changed or improved? Well, I mean, previously, you know people would order stuff, but the orders weren't getting entered into our system until very late at night or the next day. Uh, we're still selling, you know, mm -hmm. I'm still selling on four Magento stores. I'm still selling on Amazon. I'm still selling on eBay. I'm still selling on Walmart. Um, so, you know, that leaves opportunity for products to run out, even mm -hmm. though somebody has bought and paid for them. And we were having significant challenges. So we tried to manage that on a Google Doc, but mm -hmm. that's not real time. Right. So we were having a lot of instances where by the time we got to fulfilling the order, it was gone because it just, there was too much of a lapse in time between when the order was taken by hand and when the order mm -hmm. was entered into the system. The POS pretty much does away with all of that because um, if you have a good internet connection, the orders are going up in real time. Right. Um, even if you have a spotty interconnect connection, they're going up, you know, every 5, 10, 15 minutes. So uh, you're able to, the other thing you're able to do with Odoo is uh, you can kind of set buffer quantities. So I can look at any SKU and say, okay, 
I'm going to hold back 10 or 15 percent. So the system will say zero when I actually probably have two or three left. And that way I can prevent overselling on any marketplace. So you're able to do that as well. Um, you know, overall, just having an integrated inventory system has really uh, helped us in terms, not only in terms of selling, and that's, you know, what everybody thinks of about, hey, you have it in stock, you can sell it. If you know you have it in stock, you can sell it. If you know you're out of it, you got to order it. That's really kind of like basic inventory management thinking. Uh, inventory uh, management uh, within Odoo really helped us more, I would say, from the customer and user experience standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, you have when you have less instances of orders of going in to pick an order and it's not there. Uh, that's less customer service cases. Less customer service cases means that customer service can focus more on the important cases. It means that your customers overall are happier because you're not sticking them with canceled orders or having to try to swap them out at the last second. So I think looking at it from a user experience. Um, really is to me the main factor for having an integrated inventory management system because the customer has a reasonable expectation when they order and pay that they're going to get the product right. and if you can't perform that vital function it's really going to tax all the other functions within your operations so that's why we like integrated inventory management you know it's it's so funny because i think that the main theme here when talking about a digital transformation is that level of integration across uh, the entire company. And it adds to success and it adds to efficiency. Now, underpinning everything here is the brain of any organization. And that is gonna be accounting. Uh, if you are an accountant watching this video, please uh, say hello on the chat, let us know. And uh, let's take a closer look on the accounting system in Odoo and how it works with all of these other pillars that we have discussed uh, today. So there's many hurdles that every company faces when it comes to accounting. Um, whether if you're a multinational company or a one person shop, uh, there's a challenge with having your data across all over the place. Uh, there's different reports, different metrics that you have to look at. You know, maybe there isn't an automation that you have implemented. And as a result, it is a labor intensive feat to get your books in order or to reconcile your accounts. Also with taxes and, and maybe some invoicing programs, that becomes a challenge. So really what Odoo does is it takes all of these various challenges that companies face and really tries to make you hit that easy button. It consolidates uh, information, it makes reconciliation that much faster. The reporting is easy to read and to find data. And I could sit here and talk about it all day, but I think more importantly, uh, these four main pillars between managing your data, managing of information, to automating those uh, tedious functions, and deploying a proper accounting system is really the sweet spot. Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about how those, uh, how uh, more, more efficient uh, everything is now within Odoo? I know you were using QuickBooks before, but if you can walk us through that, uh, that tr uh, the transfer of, of, of systems and just the, just using it day to day, how has that been for your accountants and, and just walk us through that for us. Uh, yeah, so um, prior to Odoo accounting, I hated accounting. So I didn't like anything about the systems. I would never log in. I didn't want to have to pull reports. I didn't understand anything that I was looking at. And I just, you know, I felt like, um, I always felt disadvantaged in that sense because I didn't understand how mm -hmm. the whole process worked from an accounting standpoint. We were using QuickBooks Online in our previous system. So, of course, uh, we had to bridge it. So we bridged it with a technology called Webgility. And mm -hmm. it just created all sorts of problems because although we had all the orders going in to Magento, we also had Webgility hooked up to the marketplaces. So we had to avoid double reporting. And because it's an API bridge, if it goes down, um, you, you know, you're having issues with orders not reporting. 
Um, if the shipping software went down, the orders wouldn't update. It, we were just have, always having issues. And again, I never went into QuickBooks. I mean, the times I did, it just it it, it was ugly. So uh, we switched. We made the decision to switch from QuickBooks to Odoo Accounting. And from you know talking to my accountant and talking to my bookkeeper, who managed this day to day, it's 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 a much different way of accounting that they really like. It's uh, it's it's they they have embraced it more than they embraced QuickBooks. From my aspect, I, I can tell you this. From my aspect, I have no problem going to the accounting module now. I can pull all the reports I need. I can get the SKU level data I need. I can get the customer payment data I need or the vendor payment data I need. I understand how it works. It makes sense to me. So I'm not mm-hmm. afraid to go in there and poke around and find information um, or look for information and filter information the way that I want. I know it makes it very easy now to uh, – I'm just going to go through these four things right here. So yeah. I know it makes it I know it makes it very easy now to, for us to be able to manage our financial um, past, present, and future. Uh, we're able to look where we've been, where we are, and where we want to be, all in the accounting module. And I'm able to do it. So if I could do it, anyone could do it. Um, it does consolidate everything really nicely. We have multi-company, so it puts everything into one location, and I can just toggle between the companies and see how we're doing. And I can even compare one company to another and skew views from one company to another um it automates a lot of our processes i know a lot of our banking now is automated uh that just automatically comes in a lot of our merchants are automated um a lot of our uh credit card accounts are automated that all comes in automatically making much easier for the bookkeeper um even even you know it's funny um there are some uh merchants that we do business with uh where it's uh, the bookkeeper actually told me that Odoo is so flexible, it's 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 better for her to take an export out of the merchant every day and import it in because it instantly reconciles and does it in like two seconds. So she's there's certain things she doesn't even turn the automation on for. She's happy doing the export import for her because she's able to format it and it's extremely flexible. And then you know as far as deployment goes, um, you know it, it once we had everything integrated into one system. The deployment of the accounting side uh, really just w- was was simple. Everything was integrated. There was no bridges. Um, and again, I'm able to access all of this from my app. I could just go on my smartphone, hit Odoo, go into accounting. I have balance statements, profit loss statements. I have vendor bills. I have customer invoices. I can see that all in one location. So from somebody who's not an accountant, has no interest in accounting, and actually feared anything accounting in the past... I find it very easy to use, very informative, and very transparent. I mean, that is powerful. It's like mind blown in terms of taking someone who doesn't enjoy or doesn't really want to get into accounting because of its complexity to someone that can actually access, understand the data, and really have uh, your fingers in and really understand the nature of your business. Like I mentioned earlier, accounting is the brain of any of any business, and having uh, a system that truly allows you to dig in and be part of it in an easy way is simply a game changer. Uh, let's recap real quick the five main points that we talked about today when it comes to a digital transformation. Number one, understanding what an omni-channel experience is like and coming up with a plan to create an omni-channel um, system within your organization. Number two, A loyalty program is key for customer retention and for growth. Number three, naturally having a POS system that's not only robust, but also available when you have connectivity is critical. Number four, having that POS tie into your inventory management solution is also a point of efficiency that can't be overlooked. And finally, tying everything in with the brain of it all having a robust accounting system that integrates with all aspects of your company is truly a game changer. These five things are going to make your company be more efficient and scalable and truly up to the standards of a 21st century organization. Now, Tenant Table isn't the only company that had the benefit of working with BrainWire and has also experienced uh, digital transformation. If you would like to learn more case 
studies, and success stories, please refer uh, to customer stories at odoo.com where you'll find other wonderful examples of how BrainWire has transformed uh, these uh, other retail companies from the disparate clunky systems that they had before to a truly integrated all-in-one solution. I would like to take this opportunity now and open the floor up to questions. I know that we've had some questions throughout the chat, but uh, let's go ahead and invite you to ask your questions right now. We have Maharashi here as well from the BrainWire team. Uh, Kevin is also here, and of course, Lee and I are uh, from Odoo to answer any questions that you have. Let's see, what do we have? Lee, is there anything that you want to uh, see or any questions that you see in the chat? Bradley is asking, asking us about uh, reconciliation. I'm sure he caught um, uh, Kevin just a few minutes ago about uh, how easy it is to either uh, connect directly with your bank. Uh, we support hundreds of banks already out of the box um, that um, enable automatic reconciliation. And um, when that's not the case, uh, Kevin also mentioned um, the functionality of importing, um, you know, your, your bank statements, your reports uh, into Odoo directly. Uh, you can even choose, uh, you know, the format that you want that file to to come into the database. So you can even just select what type of um, data you want to bring in. Uh, anything that you don't need, you can keep out. And that's also super, super fluent uh, with Odoo. Um, so Bradley, there you have it. If, if you want to uh, chat more offline, we're more than happy to do so. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, fortunately, we are out of time today. I would like to invite everyone to at www.brainbuyer.com, or if you have any other pressing questions, please feel free to send them to info at brainbuyer.com. Also, I invite you all to follow us on social media, whether it's uh, Facebook or uh, LinkedIn. Please follow us as well as here on our YouTube channel where we have new content every week various types of topics that are being discussed, whether it's how to upgrade on Odoo, what, uh, uh, what are the perfect strategies for a retail business like today. So stay tuned for some upcoming webinars in the future. Again, I would like to thank our team at BrainWire, uh, as well as Lee, and of course, Kevin with Tent to Table for being here today. Uh, this has been a tremendous opportunity. We really uncovered a lot of great points to truly transform your business and giving it that extra push to make it successful and grow. Again, on behalf of Odoo, thank you very much for being with us today. I uh, look forward to answering any other questions going forward. And again, have a great afternoon or evening. Bye-bye.